Number 61. A wheel of radius 14 inches is rotating 0.5 radians per second. What is the linear speed, the revolutions per minute, and the degrees per second? So I think what I'm going to do first is just find the degrees per second. Since they gave us the radians per second, this is actually a very simple conversion. In other words, we can take 0.5 radians per second. And this is per second like every single second. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a conversion here. So in order to set up the conversion, remember, we need to know a relationship between the radians and degrees. And we know the relationship, right, from before. 180 degrees is equivalent to pi, or 3.14, radians. So all that I'm going to do now is take my degree value and put, excuse me, take my radian value and put it in the denominator because I want the, to cancel. I don't want radians anymore. And then the corresponding degree value in that relationship has to go then in the numerator, okay? So you're basically taking half and multiplying it by 180. So what's one half of 80? So that's 90. You can leave it in terms of 90 over pi. This would be degrees per second, all right? Or you can throw this number on into the calculator if you wanted, like 90 divided by three, right? So this would be like roughly a little less than uh, 30, all right? Uh, degrees per second, up to you. but. In any case, <clears throat> uh, so that takes care of that. So why don't we just do it, right? So 90 divided by then pi. So about 28.6, okay? So this is equivalent to approximately 28.6 now degrees per second, all right? Uh, okay, so now uh, why don't we find the revolutions per minute then, all right? So what we're going to do is... Um, now it doesn't matter. You can actually start with a 0.5 radians per second to figure this out, or you can find you can you can now use this value we just found uh, to figure it out. What I actually might suggest is to go back and use this original value. And why do I suggest that? Um, I suggest that because imagine if you messed up here, you just did something wrong, and then you're going to use this wrong value to then calculate the revolutions per minute. So that'll be wrong. Depending upon your teacher, they might take off all credit, or if you do the second part right, they might give you full credit, although the answer is wrong, technically. But I just go back to the given information because obviously we're all humans and we're fallible, so uh, I try to minimize my uh, you know, uh, probability of error. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the 0.5 radians per second, and now I have to do a conversion into revolutions per minute. So I notice two things are now changing. Since two things are changing, I think about this in like two steps. I'm going to do the numerator first. Sorry, I, I meant to say three steps, but two main steps. So do the numerator conversion first. I'm going to do, do I'm going to do the denominator. I can't even speak. I'm going to do the denominator conversion second. And then what I'm going to do is do a division. I'm going to divide the denominator value into the numerator value. Also assume that this is one second on the bottom. You don't even have to assume it because, you know, 0.5 over one is the same thing as 0.5. So what I'm basically doing is breaking this up into two conversions. First thing I wanna do is convert from radians into revolutions. So that's gonna be 0.5 radians. And by the way, I'll leave a link in the description below for a step-by-step -step, uh, video in how to do conversions like this, okay? I outline it there, so I gotta run through it here. Otherwise, these videos are gonna be like, you know, 10 hours long. Um, and quite honestly, right, everybody's going to look at the time and be like, uh, yeah, no. So <clears throat> anyway, um, I need to know then a relationship between radians and revolutions, okay? And you know that in one fold now, let me erase this up here, right? You know from doing problems prior, and this is why doing a lot of practice and uh, understanding the material prior is very, very important, right? Then when we rotate full circle, so... You know the values here in your unit circle, basically. And, well, didn't mean for that to happen. So when you rotate around this thing, let me see if I can move that there. So when you rotate around one full revolution, how many radians did you travel? Well, you went half a pi, full pi, three halves pi, two pi. So you travel two pi radians every single revolution. So in other words, your equality value now is going to be, there are two pi radians for every single revolution. Now, since I want the radians to cancel, I'm gonna take that value and plug it into the denominator there. Then I have to take the corresponding value and plug that into the numerator. The reason why the radians are in the denominator because I need them to cancel. 
and therefore this value now will come out to be 0.5 divided by 2, right? So that would be half of a half, which is a quarter. So you can write this as then 1 over 4 if you wanted pi in the denominator. Revolutions, that's the exact answer. Or you can actually just plug it into the calculator. So 0.5 divided by then parenthesis 2 pi. So that works out to be about 0 0.0796, roughly. Okay, it depends. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. 0 0.0796. <clears throat> And that's in terms of then revolutions, okay? 0796. All right. So that takes care of the revolutions. That takes care of the yellow part, right? This is the yellow piece. Then I got to do the uh, red piece. So now this is seconds to minutes, right? We know how to do this. So one second, we have to know a relationship between seconds and minutes. And we know that there are 60 seconds in a minute. So in other words, plug in your va relative value of 60 seconds in the denominator and your relative value of one minute because there's one or in other words, one minute comprises 60 seconds. And notice how the seconds will then cancel, right? So this is really like saying one over 60. You can throw that on the, into the calculator, <clears throat> one over 60, and that works out to be now 0 0.016 repeating. And that's in terms of then minutes now, okay? Now that's the red value. Last but not least, those are the two steps. And now the third step is to do this division. So you're going to take then the 0 0.0796 let me make that a little bigger, sorry. 0 0.0796 revolutions, and then you're gonna divide it by 0 0.016 repeating minutes, okay? Here's the yellow value, here's the red value, and now we just actually divide it. So go back into the history of the calculator and use the exact answers, okay? When you do this division, and you'll come up with then an answer of about 4.77, right? 4.77. And this is then going to be in terms of revolutions per minute. Now, you can leave your answer in terms of pi. You know, if you had to leave your answer in terms of pi, you, you gotta use this pi in your calculation then. Well, actually, wait a minute, we didn't use degrees per second, sorry. So you have to leave this in terms of pi, right? So this would have been, you know, uh, this would have been one over four pi in the numerator, and then this would have been one over 60. So it's one over four divided by one over 60. And then what would have happened is, this is the same thing as saying, remember, take the numerator fraction of one over four pi, and then you multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Anytime you have a complex fraction, you can do it like this, right? And if you notice now, we get a simplification here. Four goes into 60, uh, how many times? So it'll go into it about 15 times, right? Hopefully my brain is still working. So 15 times, right? And then, so that's 15 over pi. Now do me a favor, plug in 15 over pi. And actually, wait, does it go? Hold on, 60 over four. Yeah, 15. Plug in 15 over pi into the calculator, and what do you get? You get a value of 4.77. Oh, wait a minute. That's exactly what we found over here, right? So this would be the exact answer, okay? If you had to do it in terms of pi, this would be the exact. This is how many revolutions per minute the tire uh, or the wheel is making. Okay, these two are equivalent. Anyway, wowzers. Okay, wowzers. And are we done? Oh no, of course not. We got to find now the linear speed. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to find I'm going to find the speed. Now it depends. Inches per second, inches per minute. You know, miles per year. What what's the unit? Um, so the unit is going to be whatever I want it to be because they didn't give me any guidance. So I'm going to find, uh, I'm gonna use this value of 15, you know, over pi or the 4.77 revolutions per minute, and I'm gonna find inches per minute, okay? So what we need to do is we need to uh, think about this for two seconds. You have a circle, right? The wheel is circular, and they told you the radius is going to be 14 inches. Now, what's important here is to note that the linear speed is related to the circumference of the tire. In other words, when the tire rotates, it's the it's the circumference that's actually traveling along the ground, right? So what we need to then do is we need to then find the circumference first. So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So you're simply going to then take, plug the 14 inches on in, and this works out to be an exact answer of then 28, right, pi inches. All right, so now let's keep this on the side. Remember, the circumference is 28 pi inches, or in other words, one full revolution of this tire would cover 28 pi 
inches. Remember, pi is a number. If you want to multiply it by 3, go for it. Take 28 and multiply it by pi, you get an answer of 87.9, or roughly 88. So this works out to be 88 inches. It's the same thing. 28 pi inches is the same thing as approximately 88 inches. All right? So now what I realize is I actually have a conversion value over here. So now I can do my last step, okay? Oh my goodness. So now I'm gonna do my last step. So in other words, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, because I want this, I guess, exact answer, right? So I'll do it that way this time. So this is going to be 15 over pi. And you can write this as revolutions on the top. It doesn't really make a difference. Revolutions on the top and minutes on the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to look to do this conversion now. I need my revolutions to cancel, so they're gonna go in the bottom. And I want my 28 pi, because uh, I want it in inches on the top. Right, so let me just delete this. I might need to make a little more space. And that goes there. So now all you need to do, cross out the revolutions and your answer will be in terms of inches per minute, okay? So notice the pies will also cancel so you don't have to worry about that. So it's just 15 times 28, right? So what's 15 times 28? 420, okay, 420. So now this works out to be exactly 420 inches every single minute. That's now the linear rate. Oh my God. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Please help us out if you can. Please, I'm begging you. Um, hit the subscribe button, like button. All right. Even tell maybe some of your classmates. Um, and by the way, we got a whole bunch of problems out there. Different subjects. Math. You know, chemistry physics we got organic chemistry coming out biology i mean we got a whole bunch of stuff thousands of videos out there solve specific solutions all right check us out we appreciate it take care